The walled city is to be found at the end of the universe. It is not a suburb of Hong Kong, nor is it a shanty town. It lies on the outskirts of another planet. Fifty thousand inhabitants live squeezed in two and a half hectares of land. Two million people per square kilometer, two per square meter. No water, no electricity. Each day, this huge citadel throws out tons of rubbish. Inside, there is neither government, state, nor law. As a consequence of a historical aberration one century ago, neither the British colonialists nor the Chinese authorities rule within this enclave. The Chinese name the walled city the City of Darkness. It is an underground city above ground. None of its narrow streets measure more than one and a half meters in breadth, and the inhabitants throw out their rubbish from their windows. In this cesspit, the stranger risks his life. No film has ever been made there, and the camera this time had to remain constantly hidden. The danger is ever-present, invisible, but overwhelming. The walled city is the final refuge of the dregs of humanity. In this apartment, 30 boat people have been living together for four years.
Men, women and children exploit others and are themselves exploited. They wear each other out. No laws, no conventions prevent them from doing so. Here, for a pittance, the workers make false Swiss watches. It's eight o'clock one Sunday morning. The gambling dens are opening up. In the walled city, all business and activity is controlled by the triad, the Chinese mafia. This road marks the frontier between two territories. To the left, the 14K gang, to the right, the Ging Yi. The gangs have set up a complex spider web to sell at huge prices water and electricity bought outside. They rule over this monopoly and over prostitution, gaming, rackets and drugs. Heroin is consumed in the streets. One dose, two dollars. It is melted over a flame and the vapor chased with a matchbox stuck in the mouth. The Chinese call it chasing the dragon.
20 years ago, Jesus called this woman to the walled city. Jackie Pullinger is a Pentecostal evangelist. She saves the souls of drug addicts, crooks and prostitutes by filling them with the Holy Spirit. In the walled city, the Bordel madames hunt for their girls. The triads protect them. It is impossible to approach them. The 14K triad has set its headquarters up in this bar. The chiefs are gambling in the back. They refuse to be filmed. This man controls prostitution, gambling dens, rackets, drugs, and the settling of accounts. He is the big brother, the chief, and thanks to Jackie Pullinger, he sets one foot out of the darkness. We are offered a guided visit in one of his brothels. The brothel Madame panics, her girls too. A few years ago, Communist China authorized the Hong Kong police to patrol the walled city. Routine patrols, totally useless, there's no law, no crime, therefore no arrest. The streets are lit up, men sweep them, and they have nameplates. An estate agency thrives prosperously, so there's some sense of property. Both sides had to pay. Yeah. When you buy, you had to pay 200. When you sell, you pay $20. A private organization certifies property transactions by delivering notary acts. It's the Kaifong, a social welfare organization, well known in Hong Kong, particularly for its support from communist China. Mr. Lo, secretary of the Kaifong, what are your activities? Setting up legal acts, looking after street cleaning, drainage, and public lighting. 
街燈啊，街燈啊，啊,啊有時候有啲誒或者火嗰啲少啲嘅火警啊，我哋又想。What is your relationship with the Chinese communists? Friendly, of course. And so, Mr. Lo, the wall city belongs to China or to Hong Kong? Uh, 